got my coffee and today's guest here with me, so we're ready to roll. I'm Michael Hunt, Executive Partner at Taiwan Advisory. Welcome to our Circular Coffee Break podcast, where we will be casually talking about everything circular and beyond. We hope the podcast is interesting, insightful, and provides a new perspective for all of you. If you would like to give us feedback, have improvement ideas or suggestions, just leave a comment or drop us a note at uh, info at taiwan.com. So looking forward to all of your ideas going forward. My guest today has extensive experience in sustainability and circularity in the built environment specifically. He holds an MSc in geology from the Obo Academy, uh, Academy University. Uh, where he graduated in 2004, and after which he worked for some years as a research scientist at the Tampere University of Technology. Between 2006 and 2020, he worked at NCC, uh, one of the leading construction companies in the Nordics, where he held the role of Head of Sustainable Business Development. Since 2020, he works for NRC Group, uh, a leading Nordic infrastructure company, um, engineering, building, sustainable transport solutions in Norway, Sweden and Finland. And there he's the head of sustainability and the environmental manager for Finland. Additionally to these roles, he's a board member at the Green Building Council since last year. I'm really looking forward to jump into the discussion um, and discuss all of these topics and the circularity and sustainability in the construction and build environment. Thank you for joining me on the show today, Jukka Viitanen. Hello, and thank you for inviting me. Thanks for joining. Um, and as I said, I mean, the, the construction industry is a, is a very interesting industry where, where a lot is happening at the moment. And sustainability and circularity are hot topics, um, naturally, as the industry is, is contributing significantly to the global impact. So. I mean, you, you have been working in the field for the past 15 plus years. Um, from your point of view, how has the discussion changed? What are today some of the most burning topics you're seeing in the industry? Well, uh, how has it changed? Uh, well, it, it has changed significantly during the years that I've been working within, within construction. Because uh, back in closer to 2000, when I started there was no discussion about sustainability. Uh, the, the topics were mostly related to uh, environmental protection, for example, or following re the regulation and, and legislation that we had, but not sustainability uh, in, in general. Mm -hmm. So the, the, de the development has been really, really fast and, and we have taken a gigantic leap from, from following the law into, into this world where uh, to be able to become a, a good corporate citizen, mm -hmm. we need to have some kind of, or, or actually quite a lot of content mm -hmm. when it comes to, to sustainability. Yeah. So it has, it has developed a lot. And, and this development has only accelerated recently mm -hmm. because, for example, uh, climate change uh, mitigation mm -hmm. uh, and uh, adaptation to climate change has become a hot topic during, I would say, past five years. Mm -hmm. if, if we go back five or more years in, in uh, recent history, th then we don't have so many uh, targets or, or strategies within companies when it comes to, to climate, for example. Mm -hmm. But now all the largest companies, at least, they do have a climate strategy. Yeah. So, so that is how, how the world has, has changed for us. And in my eyes, it's only, only putting on more speed, the development. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And, and what we're seeing is naturally that it's a change across the board. So mm -hmm. it's, it's the regulator uh, coming in with, with continuously new regulation, stricter regulation. Yes. It's consumers, it's companies that, that are more and more looking into these topics, committing uh, to these topics. And in the B2B sector, in the, in the public sector, everywhere, the, the demand is shifting. But also it's employees, I think, who are looking more and more to work for sustainable companies with, mm. with, a, with a purpose in that setup and investors. Um, how, how do you see that development? What, what are the topics you're, you're seeing as, as the important ones in that context? Well, you, you actually mentioned the, the two most important stakeholders for us uh, in, 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 in that, and they are the, uh, for, as, 
for us uh, as a company, very important ones are the investors, of course, mm -hmm. because they we want to be an attractive object mm -hmm. of, of in investment. Uh, but the second thing, uh, which is uh, which has been quite uh, challenging for for uh, construction industry, is uh, being an an attractive branch for for mm -hmm. employees. Mm -hmm. The the young generation that now comes into to working life, they are interested in what kind of contribution mm -hmm. do we as a company yeah. have in in sustainability? Are are we aware of all the uh, risks that that our mm -hmm. business has and and are we doing enough for the environment and for the climate, yeah. uh, biodiversity, for example? How do we contribute to that? They they go into our website and and they look at the the content we have there, mm -hmm. and then based on on what what they can read about us and and see on social media, for example, yeah. they decide if they apply to the positions that mm -hmm. we have open. Uh, And also the investors. Well, uh, they of course the investors they they finance all the businesses that we mm -hmm. we want to operate, and, yeah. and therefore it is important that we we attract investors. Mm -hmm. And now what we have seen uh, during past year, one year uh, has uh, the, the EU taxonomy that mm -hmm. entered into force is something that that will impact uh, quite a lot uh, mm -hmm. construction branch because we are one of the big contributors in in uh, harmful negative uh, harmful mm -hmm. impact that yeah. that we have in in environment and climate and therefore we also need to work hard to to reduce that so mm. taxonomy is, is very interesting and it will impact us a lot through the investors that look at us mm. as a company to invest in interesting yeah i think it's it's the it's the harm side but a <clears throat> One, one discussion we've been having more and more is, is the handprint side, because naturally yes. you can also look at naturally how much harm do you do, how can you mitigate that, but at the same time you can naturally also with new production models, new ways of building, new infrastructure basically create a handprint in mm -hmm. that in that context, specifically if you think about public transport. Uh, enabling that and, and bringing more people towards public transport can create a good handprint in, mm -hmm. in, that, in that regard. Now, since last year, <clears throat> you are a board member in the Green Building Council in, in Finland. Uh, and as an industry body, the Green Building Council has an important role in sh basically shaping the transition of, of the industry. Um, how do you see the need to address the shift towards circularity um, as an individual company versus the action required on an industry level uh, in that context? Well, the the reason why why we have been active in in Green Building Council Finland is that uh, what we can do as a single company is is only limited. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to collaborate uh, with other companies within the branch and and in this industry to be able to to make mm -hmm. real impact, and and that is why why uh, we are working hard to to make companies uh, within the the branch to work together to uh, increase circularity within this mm -hmm. business. How do you see, we've been, we've been working recently quite a bit in the, in the building environment and, and what you see is naturally there's a strong interdependence between different players. It's, it's not that one company can just go ahead and do something. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of other companies that need to follow in lockstep, otherwise it, it doesn't work. How do you see the, the need to cooperate across, let's, let's call it the value chain, basically the value system across all of these different companies and how is that working today? Are all the different companies on the same level? Are they aware of what needs to be done and is there an ability and a willingness to find joint solutions in an industry body like the Green Building Council, but also outside of that in your day-to-day -day work at, at NRC? Mm. Well, really interesting question <laughs> <laughs> and a complex one to answer, but maybe the, uh, just to begin with, uh, well, all the companies, they are not on the same level mm -hmm. uh, because Companies they they work within different parts of of the the uh, supply chain, for example, mm -hmm. and then the requirements are a bit different. Yeah. Uh, and we, for example, as a company, our biggest customer is is uh, is public customer, the FTIA in Finland yes. that uses public money, and they, mm -hmm. they do have different kind of requirements for yeah. for the suppliers than than. Uh, 
ca- customers that that use private money, and mm-hmm. and therefore uh, we are looking at things a bit differently than than some other companies, for example. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, yeah, the, the the supply chains they are really complex, and but. Um, we we have started actually this discussion for, for example with with our suppliers on on the uh, environmental part uh, mm-hmm. now we are <coughs> requesting epds the environmental mm-hmm. product le- declarations from yeah. our suppliers and what we have noticed is that that uh, our suppliers they they are very different when it's, when it mm-hmm. comes to to being able to deliver yeah. epds some companies know what an EPD is, but there are even some cases where, uh, well, I have basically educated the supplier <laughs> on what an EPD yeah, is yeah, and what does it contain. So uh, it can be anything in between, uh, from the totally aware suppliers into the suppliers that have just recently heard about uh, EPD, for example, in, mm. in this case. So we we have a long way in 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 the situation where we can say that our our total supply chain is is sustainable. It's it's interesting <clears throat> what what you're saying exactly about this the split between companies that know very well that are spearheading these topics and the and the companies that are behind. I, I think that's one of the reasons why it's so important for a company like NRC, but also other other companies in in the in the construction industry as well as in other industries to basically take this responsibility i guess mm. of of really taking suppliers with you of working basically along the value chain and and that's also something we we started to do a circular business assessment together with WWF and, and one of the areas we're looking at very strongly there is advocacy Mm-hmm. So not only how much are you looking inside your company to be circular, to be sustainable, to do good things, but also what is the active role you're taking to change the industry, to change society, to drive systemic change, which I think will be a topic that will still um, keep us busy for some time because it's yeah. such a fundamental change in the system um, it is. that that's not easy mm-hmm. in, that, in that context. I agree, yeah. Now, I mean, in in the build and infrastructure space, we're talking about very long life cycles. So if you talk about a building, if you talk about infrastructure, you easily talk about 50 to 100 years. And if you look around the old cities uh, of of Europe, you're talking about even longer periods Mm -hmm. uh, for, for a lot of the infrastructure. So in this context, decisions made today often take a long time to take effect. Because because of these long life cycles, at the same time, decisions made in the past, 50, 100 years ago, basically influence our ability today to recycle, to refurbish, mm. to reuse, to, to basically be circular, to be sustainable. Um, how do you see the, the opportunities, but also the challenges in this context of, of having these really long life cycles in, in the things you're looking at? Well, uh, the challenges they they are related to to the long life cycles, as you mm-hmm. mentioned. For example, the railways that we construct and maintain. Well, the first railway in Finland was constructed 1860 mm-hmm. from Helsinki <coughs> to Hämeenlinna. Yes. So that's quite a while ago. The the same railway still exists in the same place, but of course the materials that were used to construct mm-hmm. the main, uh, railway originally they have been changed. I, I guess many times. No. During, during this time. But how do we today know what kind of requirements will there be on the construction materials in, in 50 years or in 100 years? Nobody knows, because if we look 10 years back, we didn't even know back then that there will be so many requirements when it comes to sustainability, for example. Yes. And, and uh, the, the development is uh, unpredictable. You, you mm-hmm. don't exactly know what tomorrow will will bring with it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we briefly talked before we, we pressed record here and we, we are, we've been working with a construction company and one thing they they mentioned is that a lot of the construction material that was used 50 years ago in, in buildings that's, that they're now receiving back for recycling, for reuse and mm. refurbish, 
basically contain um, toxic materials. So, yeah. so they cannot even be recycled, even though they would love to do that, even though they're prepared to do that. But political or regulatory decisions 50 years ago prohibit us from doing the right things today. And, and I, I, I assume it's the same in, in the infrastructure industry. Yes, yes, of course it is the same. That, that's true. And uh, uh, well, we, we use these railway specific materials and, and they do circulate to some extent quite well in, in our branch. But uh, there are also these, uh, uh, these um, old traditions and habits we work in accordance that uh, once mm -hmm. a part of infrastructure, for example, is maintained, uh, the, the, the way of working is that we replace the old material with new virgin materials. Mm -hmm. And that kind of habits, they are, they are quite challenging to, to yes. change and it takes time. Yeah, yeah no, mm -hmm. ab absolutely. And, and unfortunately, we know that the regulatory process mm. today, and I think it's, it's not much different from the past, is takes time. Yes. And, and yeah. uh, uh, we talked about the EU taxonomy and all of these things. It just takes time to, to get to a point where mm. you set the standards, where you basically have the security in the, in the operating environment that, mm. that, you can, that you can build on. <clears throat> now, when we're talking about sustainability and circularity, um, there, there's very often a knowledge gap or a difference in perspective and expertise and motivation depending on who you talk to in the organization. You very often have a sustainability team, they're naturally extremely knowledgeable and motivated. Um, then you have other departments who might know a little bit and, and others that are blissfully unaware of the topic and, and are not even interested. So how do you approach sustainability at NRC Group, specifically when it comes to bringing on board the whole organization? So the people that are sitting in the executive board, in the management, the office workers, but also people that are really working hands-on at the construction sites or in the maintenance to make sure they all understand why are we doing that? Why should I be part of that? And why is that actually beneficial for me, for the company and, and for the broader society? So are you taking actions there? How, how do you see that within the NRC group? Yeah, yeah, we certainly are taking actions. Uh, and that is a really, a really tricky and, and challenging duty, to be honest, to to uh, make sure that everyone in the organization uh, is talking about same thing when we when we talk about sustainability mm -hmm. and that is actually one thing that we started working with uh, uh, as i entered this role two, two year, nearly two years ago mm -hmm. that that we started training our people we provided this uh, uh, small internal training online training for mm -hmm. all the employees throughout the organization okay. we wanted everyone to participate to be able to, to cre create this language that we use internally when we talk about <coughs> sustainability. Yeah. And we have been able to, to attract nearly 90% of our organization to, cool. to participate wow. this this training. Uh, so, so it's great. Now, now we have created the, the foundation for sustainability mm -hmm. work. But then again, uh, talking about uh, setting targets, for example, mm -hmm. well, you have to you have to engage the whole organization into these targets. First, we talk with the, the the board, for example, or the the highest management in the company. I propose that we would I I see I would see uh, us as a company being wise to set targets like this. And then I propose mm -hmm. them to the, the board or the executive yeah. management team. And they say, that, okay, go. Yeah. Then it's time to execute. How do I make sure that everyone in, in our organization from, from the headquarters office into out to the project up Northern Finland, yeah. understand the, the content of this, uh, this target that we have set in the same way. Mm -hmm. it's, a, <laughs> it's a really interesting journey to, to work, uh, work in, in, in sustainability. And, mm -hmm. and uh, well, you, you have to visit people. That, that's yes. one thing you have to do very often. Go out to the projects and, and meet the people and, and uh, have the dialogue and interaction and, and make sure that, that everyone understands the, the message and the content mm -hmm. in, in the right way. 
Well, of course, this has to be done in, in our case in three different countries. Yes. Imagine a company that's that's uh, bigger than than NRC yeah, yeah. Group yeah. operating in in several countries. It uh, it's a it's a demanding uh, but really interesting work. Yeah, ab- absolutely. And I think you're, you're you're making an extremely good point when you talk about the common language, the, mm. the common understanding. Because I, I think specifically in the sustainability community, like the, the, the people that have been working with the topic for some time and, and are basically working with the topic, it's easy to assume that everyone understands it. It's easy. Yes. It's it's, yeah. it's basically like, yeah, sure, that's what it means. But at the end of the day, the, the, the topics, the concepts are quite complex and can be very abstract mm-hmm. uh, in, in that context. So it's really about being able to take these and contextualize them for people so that I really understand what does that specific aspect mean in the context of what you mentioned, the project up in Northern Finland. Yes. In, yeah. In, so, yeah. yeah, yeah. And of course, me as, as a head of sustainability in the company, I live in this sustainability yes. bubble yes. because yes. eight days, eight hours a day, I, I spend with sustainability topics. Yes. So I, uh, I kind of think that everyone else thinks sustainability as much as I do even though I, I know that they, they don't have that uh, mm-hmm. possibility to do. There, there are other things to, to think about out in the projects, for example. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, I mean, specifically when we talk about circularity and sustainability, we very often assume that they're supporting each other automatically. So mm-hmm. whenever I'm cir- circular, I'm automatically sustainable. Whenever I'm sustainable, I'm automatically supporting circularity. Yeah. That's not true. No. We're, we're not living in an easy world where where that would Mm-mm. actually work. Mm-hmm. Um, very often, if you think about logistics and, and all of that, be it of recycling, be it of refurbishing, of, of whatever, you're actually creating a much higher CO2 footprint or energy consumption than you do in a linear model. So also these trade-offs, yeah. it's sometimes difficult even for us to understand those, yes. let alone for a person who has, mm. I don't know, 2%, 3% of their normal work day to look at these topics. So mm. it's really important to take everyone with you it in, is. In, that, yeah. in that context. Yeah, I agree. And you, you've been uh, recently launching a, a web page, a blog. To we did, yes, just before Christmas. So t- tell me a little bit about that. What's what's the plan there and, and how are you planning to use that internally but also then, then externally? Yes, well, we, we launched this uh, uh, website called uh, Sustainability Insight blog on nrcgroup.com uh, website. And the purpose of, of that web page is, is that uh, we, we tell the story that we do internally in our company to the to the world outside us. And uh, we are, to this website, we are bringing all the stories, uh, of course, related to sustainability within mm-hmm. NRC uh, that, that we want to tell. Uh, outside the company uh, and why we do it well we want to show the world around us that th- there there is plenty of things happening within within infrastructure we are working hard on on sustainability and uh, and circularity as well uh, we are actually today we are launching a new blog text on mm-hmm. on that website so cool. <laughs> it will be coming up soon uh, and, uh, and bringing on, on different kind of content, not only blog texts, but uh, uh, but uh, video content mm-hmm. and uh, and um, this uh, this podcast we, yeah. we will be launching as well. So different kind of content, uh, something for everyone who is interested in mm-hmm. sustainability, how we work on on NRC Group, and and uh, we are thinking that we want to bring all the the practical things that that we mm-hmm. do because. Uh, the, the the academic part is uh, it's interesting to to some people, mm. but majority of people they want to know how do we do this in practice? How do we solve the the uh, questions or the the issues that we have in practice in my everyday yeah. life? And that is what we are trying to find uh, provide mm. answers to to questions like that. Uh, great. I mean, I, I think I think. It's important to bring out these examples. Hmm. Um, I, I yesterday had a discussion with someone from from Lab University of Applied Sciences in in, in Lappeenranta, and we discussed about the fact that it's so important, so critical, to actually showcase what companies are doing, give very concrete examples, so that others hmm. can basically see 
that it's not rocket science. It's something I can start small. I can start there. I can do these and these things. And it's, it's through these examples that we will hopefully activate more and more organizations, more and more individuals mm. in, in that context to take action towards that. And as you mentioned, I mean, the industry has varying levels of maturity. So if this can give other companies a guide on, okay, this is how NRC Group did it. So let's maybe test something similar. Let's maybe experiment or let's pick up the phone and call your guy and basically discuss with him yes. to see mm -hmm. how we could cooperate. I think these are exactly the initiatives we need yeah. very strongly. Yeah, yeah. We are, we are hoping to raise dialogue yeah. as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, and I mean, related to that, I mean, recently the, the, the Circularity Gap Report 23 um, basically was released and they sounded the alarm that over the past years, globally, circularity has shrunk to 7.2%. Um, just as a reminder, last year it was 8.6%. Mm -hmm. So we're definitely going in the wrong direction here. Yeah. Um, so that's primarily as the world is today almost exclusively relying on virgin materials um, and, and with that basically far surpassing the safe limits of, of the planet. So from your point of view, what can be the role of the construction and infrastructure industry and, and what are the actions that need to be taken by the industry? I mean, we talked earlier about what the industry can do, but also what society, what what the industry as a whole mm -hmm. needs to be do, uh, needs to do. And in, in order to turn this trend around and basically get closer to this target of being a circular world, being a sustainable world. Yeah, <clears throat> that, that's a really concerning development mm -hmm. uh, between these two years and, and not, not good at all. And yeah. of course, we need to make sure that, that we change this development and, and increase circularity really soon again, because mm -hmm. it, the time to act is, is now, not mm -hmm. in five years. Uh, what, what we can do as, as um, construction companies, well, we use uh, everything that we do is, is based on, on use of materials. Mm -hmm. we, we, we put different kind of construction materials together and then sell that to our, our end customer or, or the customer that mm -hmm. will start then using the, the, what we have been constructing. Mm -hmm. So we are kind of responsible on, on what kind of materials we are using. But on the other hand, at the same time, we are depending on, on what the, the customer has ordered from us and what the designer has decided that will be used in mm -hmm. the construction phase. Mm -hmm. So we need to be really active as a company to, to propose uh, use of different kind of materials, mm -hmm. to propose uh, increased circularity, uh, to propose uh, solutions that are a bit different that, than mm -hmm. we are used to working with uh, in, in the past. Mm -hmm. So this is the way the, uh, that we can and increase circularity. So we actually, we, we do have quite a lot of responsibility in this because if we are just passive and only do what we are required to uh, do, then uh, not so much development will happen. Mm -hmm. But we have to, we really have to be active in this. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think that's that's an ex extremely important point. It's like we, we have to stay active. We have to mm -hmm. stay on the ball and, and not just say like, yeah, you know, 8.6 to, 8 to 7.2, so I guess it hasn't worked out. Let's move on to the next topic. Mm. This is a topic that will remain important. Climate yes. change is there. We're seeing yeah. the impacts. We have to do things, so it's it's on all of us. And as you said, I think it's, a, it's an important point. Also to everyone listening, I mean, we all basically make decisions on a day-by-day -day basis mm. uh, on, on these topics. Uh, maybe not in the infrastructure space, uh, but definitely when it comes to construction, when it comes to consumptions and, and all of this. So the coffee is empty and it's time to wrap up uh, this episode of the Circular Coffee Break. Thanks a lot, Yuka, for the great discussion. Um, Thank you. Could have gone on for, I, I guess, another half hour uh, yeah. with all of the topics. So I agree. Let's see, maybe we'll, we'll do that again <laughs> at some point in the future. Um, if you have any comments, ideas, suggestions, please uh, let us know uh, by leaving a comment in the podcast app of your choice or sending us a note at uh, info at Also, please remember to subscribe to stay in the loop on all future episodes. Um, the episodes will drop every two weeks, so uh, keep an eye out. There's a long list of really interesting guests uh, that we have lined up that I'm really uh, thrilled to talk with in the upcoming episodes. 
I'm looking forward to seeing all of you here at the Circular Coffee Break. <laughs>